Today's video is part two in a series for anyone who has painful knee arthritis that is dramatically impacting your walking and your overall quality of life. The series is intended to teach you strategies to decrease your pain, maybe avoiding surgery altogether, or at the very least, delaying surgery. If you're new to this channel, I'm Tara, I'm a neurologic physical therapist, and on this channel we talk about anything and everything related to mobility, health, fitness, and mindset with the end goal of empowering you with as many tools as possible to take ownership of your health and your overall mobility to live an overall more active, more mobile, pain-free, happier, healthier life. And as I mentioned, this is part two. In part one of this series, we went into knee arthritis as it relates to the load that's going into the knee and what actually causes that knee to hurt depending on where that load is in the knee and walking modifications that you can do to decrease knee pain when you walk and potentially avoid or at least delay having a total knee replacement. And then in this video, we are gonna go over the exercises that are absolutely essential. Whether you're someone who you already have surgery scheduled and you really wanna optimize your recovery you're absolutely gonna wanna get these muscles strong and stretched out that we're gonna go through in today's video to help with that. But for those of you that are trying to either avoid surgery or delay surgery, today you're gonna learn the exercises that are absolutely essential to decreasing your pain and your overall mobility when you walk. Now, before we dive into the exercises, it's always a good to just review a little bit as to why you're doing these exercises. So just to review, in part one of this series, I, I went into this a little more in a little bit more depth, but generally speaking, the majority of people have pain because there's excess of load on the inside of the knee joint, which causes breakdown in the cartilage or the end caps of the bones that protect the bones uh, on the on this inside portion, we know that that's kind of creates, we don't know what came first, chicken or the egg, does the arthritis create the structural problem or does the structural problem create the arthritis? But in either case, you get like a, a V formation, or I'm sorry, um, a greater than sign with your knee where it actually kind of bows out a little bit. Not everyone is it this dramatic, but basically you're getting that increased force on the inside of the knee and you're kind of getting like a bowing out of your knee. Now, why is that important? Well, in the last video, I went into gait modifications or different ways that you can adjust your walking to redistribute the load a little bit more evenly to hopefully decrease the pain you're having when you're walking. Well, in today's video, we're gonna go through exercises to strengthen the muscles that kind of will help to kind of realign. So get you out of this bowed position, kind of get some of that excess of force that's going on on the inside and maybe redistribute those forces a little bit more evenly throughout that knee joint. So that's gonna be number one rationale behind the exercises that I've selected today is redistributing those forces on that knee joint. And then the other things that we need to address is muscle weakness that has been created because you have changed your walking pattern due to pain in your knee. And that's primarily at that heel strike moment. So where your heel hits the ground, a lot of times people kind of avoid that because there's a lot of excessive force through the knee joint at that moment. And so what people do, some people, not everyone, is they'll kind of keep their knee a little bit bent. And, you, and what that does is it creates some atrophy in the muscles, it's primarily the quadricep muscles where you need to lock that knee out, but also some tightness. So we're gonna go through some stretches that are really, really important if you are someone where you've really avoided that full knee extension for a long time, there's gonna be some muscles that you're gonna wanna stretch out and I'll point those out as I go through them. So to recap, we're gonna, you're gonna get the top exercises to strengthen the muscles, to redistribute the loads, maybe a little bit more evenly. Strengthen the muscles so that all the muscles around the knee joint are super strong if you're planning on going into surgery or you have surgery scheduled and then stretches as well to help, again, redistribute those forces more evenly through that knee joint, all of which 
have the potential to decrease your, the amount of pain that you're having when you're walking. All right, so now let's go ahead and dive into the exercises. All right, so stretch number one is a calf stretch. This muscle back here, remember what I said earlier is that some people avoid this position right here and you kind of go into this position right here and what that means is your calf muscle and your hamstring muscle get a little bit tight because you're not getting that terminal knee extension. Okay, the other reason, the other place that people have increased force, or we know that in the gait cycle, there's increased force through that knee joint, is that terminal stance. So this is beginning stance or what we call initial stance on this leg. This is what we call terminal stance. These are the two positions that some people will avoid if you have some painful arthritis in your knee. So we're basically just recreating that position and trying to do that with the knee extended that's stretching that calf muscle out. Which potentially is tight because either you're avoiding straightening your knee out or you're avoiding those two positions in the gait cycle. So Calf stretch would be the first stretch I would start with, and I would do this every single day. Try and do this with your knee straight if possible. Stretch number two is a hamstring stretch. So get in a chair with your back supported. For some of you, your hamstrings are going to be pretty tight, and this is going to be a pretty good stretch right here. If you can, remember that full knee extension is probably something a lot of you guys are avoiding. If you have painful arthritis, we really wanna work and make sure that that hamstring is nice and stretched out, especially if you're planning surgery, but also that tightness in your hamstring actually is increasing the forces on the knee. So it actually is causing pain, even though you're getting that relief in that one brief moment in the walking cycle, you still want to make sure that your hamstring is stretched out because it will decrease the force on that knee. So you don't need to buy these fancy weights, although I really, really like these. this brand. It's called The Cuff. Uh, they're really easy to keep clean and they're very, very, very durable. So I'll put a link for these weights in the description below, but just having that nice pressure, trying to get that knee into full extension. And then if you're a little bit more advanced, this is going to be a little bit painful for some of you, but you could add the addition of pulling back on your toes. That would be the goal if you can't do both of those at the same time. That's something that you might want to work towards versus having your foot pointed. You want to have that foot flexed up. So pull and hold it for one minute. And then very, very important is a quadricep stretch. So you can do that in standing better way to do this is laying down on your stomach and putting a belt around your foot and just pulling your foot up, but really stretching out that quadricep muscle in the front. And then also really important, remember I told you that position, that knee is kind of rotated outwards just a little bit. Well, the muscles on the outside of the leg over here can get pretty tight. So you're going to step across. This is the leg we're stretching and you wanna lean your hip toward that side. Okay, so this is the leg we're stretching, this one, the one in the back, and lean away. Okay, so those are the stretches that are super, super important, but now let's get to some of the strengthening. First one is just what we call a long arc quad. Literally, most of you guys can do this because you sit in a chair at least once a day. So it doesn't require any equipment. But what you want to work on is locking that knee out. Okay, if you can't do that, set your foot up on like a coffee table and just work on pressing that knee down. But that full knee extension, we call that terminal knee extension. Very, very important. And again, this is an exercise that you can do anywhere. All right, so that's exercise number one. Next exercise is what I call a Jane Fonda. You're just going to do a leg lift.
If that's pretty easy for you, you can add a weight, maybe even that same weight you used earlier for your stretching. And then same thing, you got you want to target those hamstrings. So just a hamstring curl. Some of you, this might hurt your knee a little bit. So you can just put like a little roll right above your kneecap to make it a little bit more tolerable. And then this is a more advanced version of that terminal knee extension that we worked on earlier. You're gonna try and press that knee down and see if you can lift that heel up. You can also do this with a roll underneath your knee. We call that terminal knee extension. For a lot of you, that's gonna be really hard either because your hamstrings are really tight or because you just haven't locked your knee out in so long. This is a pretty advanced exercise if you've had knee arthritis for a long time, but absolutely essential, especially if you're gonna have surgery. You want to be able to lock your knee out before you go into surgery if you wanna have the best chance at a full recovery after surgery. So terminal knee extension. Now, before we end this video, there are two more critical exercises that we really need to talk about. And the first one is full body resistance training. There is some compelling evidence that a full body resistance training program will decrease your pain due to osteoarthritis and increase your overall quality of life. The other benefit of doing an upper body resistance training program, even if you can't do a lower body resistance training program because you have pain, uh, boosts your metabolism, definitely helps with mood, but maintaining muscle mass throughout your body has so many benefits as far as inflammation, mood, and ultimately your goal of pain management. So make sure that you are still going to the gym and getting that upper body workout in or home, getting some resistance training in for your upper body. That's number one, some sort of a full body resistance training program at least three days a week, and then some sort of moderate intensity activity. Moderate intensity activity means that your heart rate is elevated and you might be having a little bit of difficulty talking, but you could still maintain a conversation. Now, I know what a lot of you might be thinking is that my knee hurts, so I can't, there's nothing I can do uh, anymore because of the pain. There is something out there that you could do to get in that moderate intensity activity. You just might need to be open-minded to maybe trying activities you haven't done in a while. Just water aerobics swimming laps, maybe going back and learning how to swim laps is a great moderate intensity endurance activity. There's the elliptical, there's the bike, there are these um, treadmills that are called the Alter G that actually decrease some of the load that's on your joints. Those, that is a fabulous option. Ellipticals for some people, for some people it might increase pain, but for some people it might actually decrease pain. But there is something out there. Gyms also have what they call these upper body exercisers, which is basically just like a bike for your arms. That's another one that can get that heart rate up. But there are so many benefits to a moderate intensity exercise that you are doing five to seven days a week, decreasing neurologic conditions, neurodegenerative diseases, decreasing pain, decreasing inflammation, increasing mood. There are so, so many benefits to it, but for the purpose of this video, definitely, definitely helps with weight management, which could be a contributing factor to your pain, but it also helps to boost metabolism, which is basically just the way that our bodies utilize energy. So moderate intensity activity, absolutely essential. That is it for this video. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did and you like this kind of video, hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell. It really helps this channel and it helps these videos to get out to more people. I enjoyed spending time with you all today and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good day.